joining us here on the show to break it down. He's a former Oiler and Titan great. He made four Pro Bowls, two-time All-Pro as well. He's an inductee to the Tennessee Sports Hall of Fame. He's a member of the Titans radio team and is a member of 104.5 The Zone. Joining us this morning on the show is Blaine Bishop. Blaine, good morning. How you doing? What's going on, DA, man? I appreciate the all the the, the great introduction there. But uh, one thing I can say is I, I was listening to your stream yesterday. I do not have a goat. I have a dog. <laughs> 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 okay, so you can feel how bizarre it is to show up at a live radio broadcast and somebody has a pet goat, and I'm supposed to act normal around it. Yeah, no doubt about it. <laughs> that, that, that's a little odd, but I, I'll, I'll let it pass. <laughs> <laughs> well, good to have you that's here on the show, my man. Let's funny. ask you about Derrick Henry. What are the odds that the Titans can back can get back Derrick Henry for the postseason? Oh man, man! I wish I, I, you know, I always wanted to be a doctor. Uh, you know, just have the doctor bishop. That sounds so cool. <laughs> but <laughs> I'm not a doctor. But I, I would say it's been uh, six or seven weeks or so. Uh, I would, if I was going to make a guess, I'm sure Derrick Henry wants to be back out there. They're probably holding him back, like most athletes. Uh, we've all been there, and uh, you know, so yeah, I think he'll be back. I, I don't even think it's a Doubt he's a freaking nature type of athlete, as everybody knows, being as big and as fast as he is. So, uh, you know, the risk reward you have to think about that as an organization. Uh, the worst thing could happen it, it uh, you know, re breaks his uh, you know, fifth metacarpal in his foot, uh, which is your pinky toe going on top of your foot, and then he has to just redo the surgery, kind of slow him down in the off season. But I, I think the risk is definitely worth it, and uh, you know, they need him at, at this point in time. They're right now the three seeds, so they're in good position to certainly make the playoffs, but they're only a game up on the Indianapolis Colts at nine and five. The Colts are eight and six. If the Titans make the playoffs and get Derrick Henry back for January, it changes the entire equation of the AFC playoff race. So if they do get him back for January, what do you think their potential then is? Well, I think he brings a dimension uh, they do a great job of, of running the football, but the dimension of the home run hit, you know, because of his speed. Uh, they have some guys that have done a formidable job uh, with Hilliard, McNichols, and, and Foreman, who, who've done a really good job. And actually, they, they rushed for 100 yards, a uh, piece 200 yards in one game. So uh, they've done a formal job, but they're not the home run hitter, and they're not Derrick Henry in the intensity, uh, you know, and, uh, you know, I guess intimidation factor and everything else involved with him playing. Uh, so I, I think it helps. I think ultimately when you get in the playoffs, though, it's going to come down to the quarterback, as you know. And Tannehill, with all the receivers being hurt, I perceive as he misses the receivers, then he actually misses the running game. So I'm not going to put, say, Derrick Henry, but I think he misses the receivers, which is A.J. Brown and Julio Jones. And I think that's really been the issue, and Tannehill has been forcing it, uh, just being a competitive quarterback and – Sometimes it works out, sometimes it doesn't. So I, I think that's really the main factor, not just Derrick Henry coming back. Because the, the scheme, they're still running the football, and they're losing games. I mean, you rush for 200 yards in a game and you lose, uh, that's an issue. It's not a Derrick Henry issue missed. It's more of a we can't get open. Mm, that's an interesting way to put it. Wow. Blaine uh, Bishop joins us this morning here on the show. Well, the Titans have lost three of four including to the Texans and the Steelers, neither one of which might make the postseason. And that's a worrisome proposition if you're losing those types of teams. Specifically, when it comes to this, the Steelers' loss on Sunday, 1913, was it the receivers and the lack thereof with Ryan Tannehill that really doomed them? Oh, absolutely. And, 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 well, and, you know, you got to put in there the obvious, and that is four turnovers. Uh, and some of it was just a drop snap, just stuff that you've never seen happen. Tip ball, interception on a screen. Uh, if they would have just kept running the football in and, and three and out, even if they didn't get anywhere, they would have won that game. I mean, that, the, the defense, you know, the Titans defense was playing that well in that game. Uh, so, you know, it's easy to, you know, hindsight, sit on the couch and say what you should have done. But I really believe that. And they had control of that game. Ultimately, and when they went back to pass, the pass protection has been a little shaky uh, the last couple of weeks, and that's concerning. Uh, so I think the Colts are very capable. I actually like what I see from the Colts 
uh, even when the Titans beat them. Carson Wentz was still hurt. He was still adapted to the new offense. He didn't practice. And, and Reich, as much as I like him as a coach, they always start off slow for whatever reason. And it's a team that I wouldn't want to play in. And the Titans hold the tiebreaker. They beat them twice. Uh, so they would have to, you know, outright beat them by a game. So there's a lot of things going on here. Julio Jones or A.J. Brown may or may not play Thursday on a short week. I'm assuming that they won't. Uh, so they're going to have to play well again. And all the pressure is going to go on Tannehill. It's interesting because it's almost like the Titans are looking at a mirror image. I mean, the 49ers tomorrow night want to run the football. They want to yep. have some play action with Jimmy Garoppolo. They want to play strong defense, control the line of scrimmage. It's kind of all the things the Titans want to be right now, right? Yeah, this 49ers team, I've watched them a couple times, been on that field. I think I watched them in the Rams game, and man, I mean, I watched it from start to finish. And that's when they start going on this run. I think they've won five of the last six games. And I really like their team and their scheme and, you know, the Shanahan scheme, if you want to give it that term. Uh, and they have capable receivers in, in Samuel and uh, UK. And, I mean, they, they've got some really good players. I, the edge to me, to the Titans, is they have to fly on a short week all the way here uh, to the south in, in Tennessee. But, man, I, I think it's going to be when it comes down to the end. And I don't know if A.J. Brown doesn't play and Julio Jones doesn't play. I don't think they have enough weapons on offense. If they play perfect, uh, it's going to make it a close game, let alone if you have a turnover or two. So you almost have to play a perfect game. And we all know, uh, you know, as an athlete, you strive for perfection knowing you'll come a little bit short, but you can't have turnovers with it. So is there a frustration then from, from, from fans and media about Ryan Tannehill that once Derrick Henry was out of the equation or the injuries to the wide receivers happened – he couldn't pick up the slack or are those understandable excuses for why he's playing poorly? Wow, man, that, that, that is a great question because I, I wish I was in the meeting rooms and because every play and turnover that happens has its own story. Uh, I think the offensive line pass protection hasn't been very well on top of you don't have any big-time playmakers. And if they get an opportunity, it'll be their first experience and maybe they drop the ball or don't run to the first down marker, come up a yard short, things like that. Uh, so I, I think everybody's going to point to Tannehill, and I think he's capable, but he has to have the right weapons around him to be effective. Uh, and so they're, they're, you know, they're, they're plotting through and managing through, but if they don't get any big-time uh, you know, receivers back, some guys that are, are threats, to defenses, being a former defensive guy, and then you start tightening up and tightening up and making your coverage even tighter because you don't think they can beat you deep, uh, it's going to be an issue, uh, let alone pass protection. has been, been an issue all season, but it becomes more glaring when they have to throw the football and uh, teams with really good pass rushers are, are, are you know feasting. Tomorrow night's a huge one for both the Niners mm -hmm. and the Titans from Nashville on Thursday night football. As a former safety yourself, a guy known as the hit man, I wanted to ask you about Tom Brady complaining about the Chris Godwin hit. Now, nobody wants to see a wide receiver lost to the season ACL, no. but you know, Tom Brady's like, these are illegal hits. Why are you allowed to hit wide receivers low? You can't hit anybody else low. And I wonder from a former safety's perspective how you feel about where you're supposed to hit, the decisions you have to make, trying to avoid injury to a player, and all of that. How difficult are those decisions made, especially in a split-second situation? Yeah, Tom says a lot of things, uh, you know, that the league probably should address. And I typically – I agree with most of the things that he says on this one, though. I think this was more of a, I'm going to support my guy. And Godwin, a free agent after this year, now he's torn his ACL. I said it immediately that he either sprained his MCL, uh, Dr. Bishop, uh, and then or if he tore his ACL and he finds out he tore his ACL. Just based off the hit. The guy, you know, you're trained to hit. You can't hit him high. So where are you going to hit him now? Okay, as a safety or, or DB or a linebacker or whoever you may, uh, whatever position you may play. And so then you, you aim for the thigh. You don't know his foot is going to be implanted in the, in the ground, and you're, no one's intentionally out there trying to hurt anybody. So, I, I, you know, I, he hit thigh, and then you end up being right above the knee. And then, you know, it, it happened. I mean, so I, I think you have no choice but that. I thought it was a clean hit. Uh, so – I, I support defensive back. Not being that I was a former defensive back, I'm thinking, what else can you do? The game is so fast. The guys are so much bigger and stronger and faster, which means that you're more susceptible 
to injuries, to be honest, because of the impact of the hits. Uh, so I think there's nothing you can do on that type of play. Uh, we're protecting guys' heads, so now they predicted when all that came about, when they changed the rule, then that guys were getting more knee injuries because guys were going to go low, and that's exactly what's happening. And it's kind of a catch-22, right? Because players yeah. will say, hit me high. I don't want my knees blown out. Those are my money right. makers. But the league is saying, don't hit high. You're going to get fined. You're going to get tossed out of a game. You're going to get a 15-yarder. So you're kind of in a no-man's land because what are you going to do? You, you, you have to hit somewhere, and you can't just target, I guess, the chest plate every single time, right? Well, I mean, if you were so good and you had, you know, a, a radar that says always uh, hitting this spot, I mean, the guys are that, you know, the guys are too good. I mean, sometimes you're not going to be able to hit them in the chest. You may be able to grab them out of the waist. You, you may be able to grab them their ankle. I mean, there's going to be so many different angles and situations. And to me, as long as you keep your head up and you're trying not to intensely attack and launch your body uh, and head, I think that's the only thing you can do as a defensive back. In the game, you know, they're passing the ball a lot more. And here's what my, my question would be, uh, well, Brady, uh, you know, I think he only took a step or two. Hey, don't, don't throw that ball. You knew the coverage uh, and that that was a possibility. Yeah, and Tom, is it okay if we hit your knees? Is that okay? Because <laughs> at this no. point, you're not allowed to hit anything on Tom Brady. Right. I mean, and, and I get, you know, the quarterback situation of, you know, not hitting guys. It's, you know, we had a situation like that with uh, Simmons in the last game. It's very unintentional. I thought it was a possibility he got blocked into him, but it was more his effort. He was basically crawling. He got hit, knocked down. He's crawling to Ben Roethlisberger and, you know, jumped up off of his knees and tried to grab him. Didn't even – I don't even know if Roethlisberger – he might have failed eventually, but he barely touched me. They called a penalty. So, and I, I didn't have a problem with them calling that penalty. I think it's, you know, it's your, you know, questionable call, but you, I'm not going to complain about it because I get protecting the quarterback, their defenses that way. Uh, so, uh, you know, it, it, it's a tough, tough deal. It's, you know, it's a tough sport. It's a physical sport. Uh, you know, they always, uh, I'm going to say this, baby the quarterback, so they can't baby everybody on offense. I mean, man, the rules are all – favoring the offense at this point in time. You can barely touch somebody. I mean, your hand fighting now, they call pass interference. I mean, what do you want guys to do if they're looking at the ball? <laughs> Man, I mean, you want me to get into that. I, I want to change that rule. The, the rule is if your hand fighting, you, you uh, pass interference, I don't want spot foul. I want a 15-yard penalty. They'll never do that because that's like college. <laughs> so I, 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 would get, I would get pass interference all the time now if I, if I played. I, I was holding guys around the way. <laughs> Uh, hitting their arms, uh, you know, their stride frequency, hitting their legs, any advantage that I could get to, you know, run with some of these guys, man. It's, <laughs> it's, a, it's a tough deal. I got to tell you, when I watch football and there's these ticky-tack fouls and they throw yeah. pass interference everywhere or defensive holding, I'm like, if I was a defensive back, I don't know how these guys keep their cool. You know, they, they see a flag, they might be surprised, they go right back to the huddle and they're back to their job again, which is what you have to do as a professional. But I would just be outraged. Like, what do you want me to do? I can't do anything here. You are regulating against my job. I don't know how these guys keep their cool. Yeah, that's, that's interesting because I think at some point you just want to go, no way, <laughs> you know, you want to yell. But uh, you're kind of trained in that way as a defense back, especially cornerback, because in reality, you know, you know you're going to get beat at some point in time. You're not invincible, uh, and you have to throw it out and go back out there and say, I dare you to throw it over here again. And if you don't have that mentality, boy, you know, the quarterbacks can sniff you out. And they'll come at you, especially uh, when you're a younger player. They'll keep coming at you and see if they can break you. I'm thinking the next Blaine and Mickey show, I'm bringing a goat. Is that cool? <laughs> you know what? <laughs> that would be perfect because Mickey probably could tell you what kind of goat it is being that he's <laughs> in the middle of nowhere, Arkansas, where he's from. <laughs> <laughs> Blaine Bishop, former Pro Bowl and all pro safety for the Tennessee Titans. You can hear him afternoons on 104.5 at the zone with the Blaine and Mickey show. Blaine, it's awesome to catch up as always, my man. Thanks so much. Enjoy the football game tomorrow night, and hopefully we'll catch up again. Have a wonderful holiday season and a great new year. Happy holidays. Will do, man. Appreciate it, DA. Bye-bye. Back at you.